Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Henson, President and Founder of Agile Dad, and it's time for today's episode of The Daily Stand-Up. So without any further ado, let's get started. It is Tuesday. Another wonderful week has begun, and I am so excited for all of the upcoming things that are rolling out your way. There, there's so many adventures and so many new podcasts. If you haven't checked out the Agile Expert Series, we've got so many exciting experts that are going to be joining us. Lots of cool stuff. But I did get a question that I want to talk about today, and it's one that's been on my mind quite a bit. And the question is, you know, how do I know when we're not really doing Agile? It's the question about doing Agile in name only, right? And I hear teams doing this all the time where they say, yeah, we're doing the Agile. Or sometimes I've heard people say that uh, Agile is such a big deal now that it's something that we want to sprinkle a little agile pixie dust on it or scrumify it or agilize it or agilify it or whatever the case may be. And they don't want to change what they're currently doing. They just want to take what they're currently doing and make it more agile. Yeah, I know it's a head scratcher. I, I just, I couldn't put my finger on some of those symptoms. So someone asked me, I said, Lee, they said, could you identify some items to look out for? Like maybe a short checklist of some items that we could look for to see if we really are practicing agile or not. And I scoured the internet and I came up with a pretty good list. So I thought I'd share some of these lists with uh, some of the lists with you. Uh, so here we go. So coming in right at the top, when you're dealing with end users or stakeholders and you find that they're giving you feedback, but that the feedback is just completely being ignored or, uh, or that it, the, the feedback's just being completely neglected and that people aren't making any attempt to inspect and adapt or pivot and adjust, that you're driving so hard towards the original plan or scope that you're not changing direction, that's probably a good sign that Agile is failing in your organization. Okay, how about another one? What about when you are going through the process of trying to deliver or deploy code or whatever you're trying to do, deliver or deploy a product or service, and you find that it's painful. You find that you're always, it requires working after hours, working on weekends. There's no automation to get things done. It requires a bunch of manual approval requirements. That, that's also probably a very good sign that, that Agile is not going well, that things aren't going as they should. Uh, another example would be, when change requests are coming in, when people are asking for you to change things and those change requests are completely unjustified uh, or they're just not qualified, it, it doesn't make sense what they're asking for when change requests come in. Uh, in addition, when changes are acceptable and they're, and they're something that's reasonable, the team gets into that groan zone because they absolutely, oh, they're dreading change, right? When, when change isn't reasonably accepted by the team, it's usually a sign that A, the change request is unreasonable or B, that the team hasn't embraced the inspect and adapt empirical process model, right? Or C, I guess, uh, which is, could be another one. If you completely separate quality from the process, if you separate quality from build, if you have developers and testers that are separate, and uh, even better, if you take quality completely out uh, altogether, which sounds scary, but I've seen a couple of companies do it, you know, that's usually a good sign that your agile implementation could be struggling. Uh, here's another if you're struggling with lack of communication, uh, whether it's across teams, within teams, and you find that you know, you're not communicating directly with the stakeholders and it's causing a lot of rework or a lot of confusion or even a lot of arguments, I've seen it go that far. That's another sign that you know, things aren't necessarily going your way, that you need to readdress or reposition. Uh, how about this one? When people start promoting things that are not essential, especially things that the team has previously considered and thought about and said, we need to put that off. So I've been in a lot of situations where people say, hey, we need ABC or we need CDE. And, and uh, the team's like, oh, I'm not sure it's a good idea. Let's put that off for a little while and focus on the infrastructure. And then all of a sudden, the ABC or CDE becomes the number one thing in a product owner's backlog. I've seen it happen, right? And that, that's just so frustrating for teams and it's frustrating for individuals. And it's just frustrating altogether. Or what about... When you're working with a group of managers or leadership and you find that they're not following my Nelson Mandela rule, they're doing a whole bunch of talking and not a whole bunch of listening, right? I, I see it all the time. That's another one. You know, good leaders and good managers should, uh, should spend a lot more time listening and trying to figure things out than they should talking. Or what about when you're being asked to report on certain things and the mechanism for the reporting or controls 
uh, are created, uh, or if, even if they already exist, I guess, to ensure that mistakes are not repeated. So, uh, you know, sometimes when you see that there's a, a, an improper mechanism of reporting or there's micromanagement or command and control when it comes to those kind of things, that you're not keeping track of things the way you should be, uh, and you're not going through inspect and adapt and pivoting, what you're doing is you're causing more uh, heartache and more grief for the teams. Or one of my favorites, I had to make sure I jotted this one down. I went into an organization and uh, I saw, you know, I, I, they told me they were doing a more of a Kanban view. And I'm good with that, right? But then they showed me their Kanban board and it had probably 14 columns, which concerned me right away. But the majority of the columns were review columns. It was uh, initial code review, expert code review, architectural code review, infrastructure code review, quality code review. This, I was like, oh my goodness. So by the time you get through all 17 review layers, you know, which, which you build is going to be outdated or old. It, it sounds silly, but I've seen where organizations spend so much time reviewing that they never, ever get a high quality of product or service out the market. They never get the feedback. They never get that feedback loop in motion. And then, of course, there's invariably my favorite. Uh, when people have death by meeting going on, when there's too many meetings with the team members, causing them to work a whole lot less and spend a whole lot more time in meetings. I will never, ever, ever forget this quote. I had uh, a team member who came to me and he was so excited. He says, I've solved the agile problem. I said, really? He says, yep. He says, all I need to do is find an excuse to attend 19 daily standups in a day and I won't have to write any code. I won't have to do any work. I was like, oh my goodness. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's to the point where sometimes, you know, agile is equal to meetings. And, and that concerns me because if anything, you should be scaling back the scope of these meetings and the amount of time they take. You should be scaling back the amount of information that's covered. You should be imposing whip limits. And all these things are going to cause your meetings to be shorter with more relevant information. But I think people oftentimes don't know how to treat meetings, right? Or what about, what about the one guy? We'll call him Felipe. You know, my good friend Felipe. Felipe is an excellent developer. In fact, he's one of the best you have. So he's so good that we need to make sure he works on every single project that's in motion. You know the guy, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the best person we have and we're going to split him evenly across all the projects. We're going to put him 26% on this project, 31% on this project, 74% on this project, 86% on this project, 15% on this project, and 13.8% on this project. Because somebody added all that together and it equals 100% of his time. Don't ask me, it's common core math. Uh, but the, the point is, by the time you do the math and you figure out how much time this person's actually spending on each thing, you know, and you take out time for lunch, time for breaks, time to go to the restroom, time to answer the phone, that they work six hours a day, not actually eight, that that's the productive time. And by the time you factor all that in, you know, Felipe might work, you know, I, I could do the math, 17 minutes and 12 seconds on this. So I'm sure that the second he goes to start coding, he's going to hit a stopwatch and go. And the second goes, dee, 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 dee. he's like, oh, time's up for that one. I, I got to shift and go work on it. Nobody works that way. Nobody ever works that way. And we take our best people and do that to them, which makes it even a bigger struggle, right? So while I'm a big fan of cross-pollinating and having T-shaped teams, I think that this is definitely a nightmare if it's not taken care of. Or what about when the team takes time to meet and make a decision collaboratively to become part of their team working agreement and a manager steps in one day one hour later and just overrules overturns the team decision we're not going to do that we're going to do oh my goodness it makes me crazy how are teams supposed to learn and grow if they're not given the, the power you know a great power comes great responsibility but at the same time you've got to empower teams you got to enable them to do the things they need to do in order for them to be successful and finally the one that is the hindrance of almost every organization I go into is when people go in and they say, okay, out of all these different responsibilities, out of all these different things with urgent deadlines, what's the most important? And uh, so I said, well, they're all important. They're, they're, they're all urgent. You know, and my favorite is when I use the word priority. You know, which ones are the highest priority? Well, they're all high priority. They're all important. When you start associating the word priority and importance together, that's usually a sign that you're doing it wrong. 
priority should never equal importance. Priority should equal urgency. And if you think about it that way, no one's going to ever ask you to do something unimportant. Hey, Jim, I have these really unimportant things I need you to work on. Or Stacy, can you get to these unimportant things? When you have <laughs> Nobody's going to do that, right? What are they going to do instead? They're going to say, uh, everything's important. And now that I understand that and I recognize that everything's important, out of all these important things, which ones are the most urgent? And I think that when you can have that discussion, that's a sign of maturity. So I guess what I'm trying to say is out of that whole list, if you've identified more than two I would probably say that your organization is in need of some agile coaching or training, and it's not a self-promoting thing. Take the time to find a highly skilled, qualified agile coach or trainer that matches exactly what your organization needs. Do some interviews, look at reviews, check their profile on LinkedIn, find out why people bring them in, find out what their strengths and weaknesses are. Always look for positive recommendations. If they don't have at least 150 to 200 positive recommendations, you probably want to be dealing with someone else. The other warning is never just go for the low price leader. A lot of times you'll have someone with a very low price, but they're not going to do the job well. Sometimes you you get what you pay for, right? So I hope that you took away something from the session. I hope you learned something. We encourage you to uh, write to us if you have a topic you want us to discuss here on a daily standup. You can reach us at learnmore at agiledad.com. That's learnmore at agiledad.com. We'd love to hear from you and broadcast your topic. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.